Peter Bruce. Under your chairmanship, and indeed always to follow the Honourable Member for, for Strangford. And I, I do want to thank um, the Honourable Lady Member for Gow for the gracious tone in which she introduced this debate, so right on such a, a sensitive issue. It is encouraging to note how many colleagues are here today expressing concern about the wording of this petition, and, and I join them. The idea of a, a right to abortion not only conflicts with the established position of international law on the right to life, but would also cause huge complications for our domestic law, including abortion in a, a Bill of Human Rights is inappropriate and likely to result in extensive litigation to establish the extent of such a right. This petition is, whatever our views on abortion, therefore from a legal perspective, misguided. And I agree with the response of the former Justice Secretary when he said, there is no strong case for change. Uh, I'd just like to refer to one um, point made by the, the proposer of the debate. Um, when the Honourable Lady referred to uh, just one woman bringing forward this petition, and it's true that the, the petition has been brought in the name of one person, but um, let's be under no illusion here um, this is part, the, 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 the move to uh, create a, a, a abortion as, as, as classified as a human right, is part of a very well-coordinated national and international campaign to have abortion declared as a human right. So I'd like to start, if I may, firstly, to comment from the international perspective on this and to say a few points about the robust protection of the right to life in international law and the explicit rejection of the so-called right to abortion. And it's important for us to start with this perspective because uh, we've heard it said that the UK must adopt more expansive abortion laws because of international law. But why should we? We are not under any obligation to liberalise abortion laws from international legal texts. None of the nine core treaties that the UN recognises have recognised abortion as a human right. Human rights are, by common definition, inherent or inalienable rights or freedoms afforded to every person without discrimination. They must be upheld and protected by governments, and I'm sure that any new Bill of Rights in this country will seek to robustly uphold those fundamental rights. But international texts on human rights have never included abortion. Allow me to reference this with four points. Firstly, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights affirms the inherent right to life. It contains a provision to explicitly protect the life of a, prote of a pregnant woman, uh, which in the preparatory sex is explained as, uh, actually I should say, in the travaux préparatoires, I think I've nearly got the French right, the preparatory text is explained as, to quote, to save the life of an innocent unborn child. Secondly, the Declaration of the Rights of the Child states, the child, by reason of his physical and mental immaturity, needs special safeguards and care, including appropriate legal protection, before as well as after birth. The need for such special safeguards have been recognised in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Now that quote from the Declaration of the Rights of the Child was confirmed by the Convention on the Rights of the Child and the UK has ratified all three of those treaties. Indeed, the preamble to the Convention of the Rights of the Child was very much a, a, a indicated that it was an impetus behind our landmark Children Act in 1989. And under that convention, all countries are obligated to ensure to the maximum extent possible the survival and development of the child, including the unborn child. Yes. Um, I, I've been listening to, to both sides here, and I'm not hearing an answer to one question which seems to me fundamental, and that is, at what point does a fertilized egg become a viable human being with rights? And from one side, I'm not hearing any recognition that a baby about to be born is actually 
viable and has got rights. And on the other side, I'm not hearing that a newly fertilized egg is not yet a viable human being and therefore does not have the same rights as a human being. And it's going to be a dialogue of the deaf until both sides recognize that this is a spectrum and it's not uh, an either or. Well, that, that, that is a, a discussion which has been ongoing for, for a long time and many in this room hold, hold different views on that uh, subject. I, I happen to believe myself that, that life begins at conception, but I know that others take a different view. The, the third point, uh, 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 the Convention on the, the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, CEDAW, also doesn't advance any concept on a right to abortion. Nowhere within the text does it reference terms such as reproductive rights, pregnancy termination or abortion. Instead, it requires states to provide suitable care and services for women during pregnancy. And fourthly, the former UN Special Rapporteur for Health has told the UN General Assembly that there is no international law on the matter of abortion. I think it's also important for us to note that the European Court of Human Rights has never ruled that countries within the Council of Europe need to consider abortion as a human right, even though it has considered the matter several times over the past 20 years. Three points are relevant here. The ECHR has, affir has affirmed that Article 8 of the European Convention on Human Rights, the right to a private and family life, cannot be interpreted as conferring a right to abortion. And I'll quote from a, a 2010 case, the woman's right to respect for her private life must be weighed against other competing rights and freedoms, including those of the unborn child. <laughs> Secondly, the ECHR has ruled that forced abortions are a breach of Article 3, the prohibition on torture, noting that forced abortions can have, quote, long-lasting negative physical and psychological effects, end of quote, on women. And thirdly, the court has reaffirmed that there is no actual right to abortion, even in the, and, and I, I accept, the tragic case of, of rape. The UK really is under no pressure from the UN or from the European Court of Human Rights to reform its abortion law by classifying abortion as a human right. I'd now like to turn to consider this issue from, from the domestic perspective, if I may, and I know we've already had a, a lengthy discussion on this uh, during the, uh, the debate here today. But I would like us to acknowledge that if we include abortion as a right, as a human right, how, how chaotic that would make our laws here. Uh, we've already had the discussion, and, and the, there are different views on this, as to what a right to abortion would do in terms of would it equate to decriminalisation of abortion wholesale? Would it create an absolute right to abortion? Could it mean the removal of gestational limits, allowing abortion up to birth? Could it mean abortion based on the gender of the fetus? Could it mean the removal of medical safeguards, including the involvement of doctors? Would it mean the erosion of the conscience rights for medical professions? All of these questions would be thrown up. Yes. for giving way and because one of the things I, I, I kind of I try to grapple with is is that you know knowing how women feel and when I was on the Women and Equalities Committee and, and the Honourable Lady from uh, Right Honourable Lady from Basingstoke knows this because she was the chair to listen to those women does the Honourable Member really believe that these women should be criminalised I absolutely have the utmost compassion with any woman put in the position of having to make a decision about abortion. And, and I hope that nothing that I've ever said in all the years in this House when I have, I have stood as the, the, the chair and now co-chair for the pro-life group has ever given that impression. I would never want to do that. But this proposal risks entirely removing safeguards in our country which relate to abortion and which I believe are right and proper. 
Marmor friend for yes. giving way. Yeah. Can I thank Marmor friend for giving way? And she's making an important case that she believes has a great deal of strength in terms of this not being viewed as part of a human rights argument. But does she not share my concern that every single royal college of doctors experts in this area want to see a change in the law. Does she not think that even if it's not possible to do it through the Bill of Rights, that some other piece of government work is needed to make sure the law is fit for purpose? Or does she think they're all wrong? Well, it's very interesting that there are a great number of organisations, uh, as uh, the Honourable Lady has mentioned, or Right Honourable Lady, um, who are joined together in what I have referred to earlier as a, a national and indeed international campaign to see the law changed on abortion. And I do believe it is all part of a coordinated move to reduce the protection that already exists in our country today for the unborn child. Yes, I'll give way. I thank the Honourable Lady for giving way, and, and, and I fully support what the Honourable Lady is saying. In my contribution, I referred to the Royal College of Midwives. I referred to a, hundred, a thousand midwives who expressed concern about the way the direction we're going. What it has done is divided opinion. Uh, I mean, of, of those who are in favour of abortion and those who are against, and, and quite clearly. The, 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 this cannot be driven forward when we have a division amongst the people who the doctors and the nurses and themselves. Thank you, Member, for, for that uh, intervention. Uh, in this country, we do already allow abortions to term where the unborn child has relatively minor uh, and correctable f physical conditions. And I've spoken about this many times in the House before because I have a, a son who was born with a, a club foot. 90% of babies with Down syndrome are aborted. A right to abortion would open the door to even more abortions after 24 weeks, a period of time inconsistent, as we've heard, with medical advances which enable babies prematurely born before this now to survive. Now acknowledged as 22 and in some cases even would 21 like? weeks. Yes. I, I think she's inadvertently now, notwithstanding her, her principal view, which I respect, that life begins at conception, but she has now addressed the question that my honourable friend from New Forest West, uh, New Forest East, asked: When do those rights come to the child? And it's on the basis of viability outside the womb. Whether we've got that, the answer, the, the, the correct dates, uh, right or not, I don't know. But nevertheless, that is the answer to his question. Well, I thank the, the honourable member, or right honourable member, for that, that uh, intervention. And indeed, it is, it, I, I'm relieved that it is for this House to make a decision on when we review those weeks. And I'm hopeful that we will continue to be in a position to do so for a long time to come. That is an issue which we now need to look at again and see a reduction from the number of weeks from 24. We know that. Late-term abortions are unsafe for women. We know that most European countries have abortion gestation limits of half of hours, 12 to 14, and research shows that late-term abortions are distressing. And finally, polling shows that women don't want a time limit increase. All of this would be thrown into the mix if abortion is classed as a human right. In conclusion, there are many other things I could say against this petition but I would just like to ask the House a simple question. What type of society do we want to create for our country? Surely is it one which, as a, which promotes a culture that upholds and respects life, including unborn life. I am so grateful to live in an age where I know that there is science behind me, science that tells us that a beating heart can be detected at six weeks gestation that the ability to feel pain can be evidenced from as early as 12 weeks, and that the sucking of thumbs can be seen at 15 weeks. I stand for the rights of the unborn because it is undeniable that they have life. As the campaign slogan states, both lives matter. Let's develop laws that protect the life of the unborn child more alongside the lives of women.